It's a nasty night, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go and get yourself a little nip. Oh, thank you, Miss. Thank you. Same for you. It's grim. <laughs> We know all about that, but I still want to know why you hit him with a bottle. Like I said, he insulted me. Come, Nelly, you've been insulted before. That's hardly the point, officer. Anyway, he wouldn't pay me what he owed me. Ah, that's better. Now we're getting nearer the facts. He insulted me. Oh, good evening, sir. Is it Spectre on me, Elizabeth? Yes, sir. Shall I tell him you? Oh, it's a tough. That, Nelly, was the assistant commissioner from Scotland Yard. Not that it's any of your business. It is, if he's come to put a rocket under your fat backside. Another of them ripper jobs last night. Or hadn't you heard about it? You've had all the extra men you've asked for. The rest of London is practically naked of policemen. And still, you're no nearer to making an arrest. I've made plenty of arrests, sir. Dozens of them. Every lunatic and sensation seeker in London has given himself up as Jack the Ripper. Stop using that stupid name! I didn't christen him, sir, but the one who did knew what he was talking about. Have you ever seen any of his victims? No. Body's a body, isn't it? What's the point of romanticizing these crimes? Do you know that they've asked another question in the house today? So I heard. Home Secretary's practically out of his mind. What's being done, they keep asking him. He's run out of replies. He has my deepest sympathy. There's no cause to be flippant, O'Neill. I have not been flippant, sir, and I'm going to tell you something else. Do you know how long it is since I've been home? Four days. Do you know how much sleep I've had in the last 48 hours? Six hours, all here on this chair. I've got every man working in this station every hour God created. Most of them are ready to drop, but they go on just like I do because it's their job. 
despite the fact that every ignorant layabout from here to Westminster and back thinks they're lazy and incompetent and they ought to be dismissed. You must pardon me if I don't feel sympathy for the Home Secretary just because he's embarrassed in the House. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, what's the next move? Every line of investigation will be followed to its logical conclusion. That's what you said last time. And I shall very likely say it next time, too. Come in. What is it? Sorry, sir, but there's a man in the bar at the Red Goose asking questions about the Ripper. The governor thinks the crowd might start getting ideas. The crowd of the Red Goose always have ideas of some sort or another. I suppose I better go down and see what it's all about. All right, Sergeant. You'll excuse me, sir. Of course. But remember, Inspector, the police force are in particularly bad order at the moment. We're all relying on you to do something about it. I shall continue to do my best, sir. I'm sure you will. There's a good fellow. Now, off you go. This man might be the Ripper himself, eh? He might, sir. He might. We know what you're about, mister. Don't give us that stuff. All I asked was if anyone had actually seen the Ripper. We heard what you said. We're not deaf. We want to know why you asked it. That's what. I'm interested. That's why. We know you're interested, mister. Oh, interested. Oh, I'm sorry. Couldn't be I... that you're interested to see if anyone's seen your face, are you? No, you don't think that... Come now, gentlemen. I just arrived from America this morning. That's what you say. Can you prove it? Why should I have to prove it? Let's give it to him. Hold on a minute, boys. But come on, he's a foreigner. They said the Ripper was a foreigner. Now, Mr. Jack the Ripper, what have you got to say for yourself? We'll soon make him talk, won't we, boys? All right, my friend. Let's see how you like your belly slit open. Stop that. Let him go, Charlie. You too, Tom. Well, he's been asking all sorts of questions, Mr. O'Neill. Questions about the Ripper. Since when did you take the law into your own hands? All due respect to you, Mr. O'Neill, but the police haven't been much help, have That's they? That's still no excuse. Now get out of here, all of you. Come on. Take him with you. Come on, move. You listen to him, make sure as bad as he is. Now get a move on. Come on, hurry it up. Nice piece of work, mister. The way you handle them, I mean. Nasty rough men they are. There. That's right. Better now, sir? Yes, thank you. Give it back, Snakey. Give what back? He's a friend of mine. Oh, on my life, Mr. O'Neill, I never knew he was a mate of Give yours. Give it back. Oh, Here you are, Governor. I never knew you was a mate of Mr. O'Neill's. I swear I never. I, I wouldn't have done it. ta -da. Two whiskey, please. Well? Well, what? Now we're quits. I visit America, you drag me out of a fight in New York, you come to London, favor a turn. All part of the Metropolitan Police Service? When did you arrive? This morning. Well, why didn't you come and see me? I thought I'd have a look around the scene of the crime, get a little local color. You nearly became part of the local color. Bright red. Thanks. Oh, and uh, thanks for your help, young lady. Oh, that's all right, sir. Hello, Ellen. How's your mother? Oh, she's much better, thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Good. Nice kid. I'm almost glad I came. You'll excuse me asking, but why did you come? Your letter just said you were arriving. Believe it or not, the New York Police Department have given me a vacation. Well, you chose a good time to come to London. So it seems. Want any help? What about your vacation? Well, a change is as good as a rest. Anyway, in New York, we don't have a ripper. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you mind if I take along? By all means, it can't do any harm. Well, I'd settle that. Where do we start? First, I suggest you come home and have some supper with me. After supper, you can go around to the station, start reading up what we know today. Get some of that local color you were talking about. This is 
when can a policeman afford to travel 3,000 miles on a vacation? Something I didn't tell you, Ned. The department are paying. Oh. They're interested in this ripper business insofar as it affects the local populace. General reactions, attitude towards the police, mob violence, stuff like that. Well, see for yourself. Look at this straight. Before this ripper business started, you could hardly move along here. Stalls, barrel organs, people spilling out of the pubs. It was a happy place. Not particularly moral, but happy. Take these men that attacked you in there. One of them is a blacksmith, another a shop assistant. I know them well. Apart from the one with the knife, they're just ordinary people. No, they didn't seem much like ordinary people to me. That's what the Ripper has done to them. Now, do you mean and no this? jokes, please. You'll learn. Come on. The next time you come in here and can't pay, I'll have you fixed proper. Ah, uh, none of that, none of that, of it. Hey, you. You're late. I'm sorry, sir. I lost my way. First day, and late. I don't know what some of you girls think this place is. Go on, get inside. Good evening, Mr. O'Neill. <laughs> and you too, sir. Who was that? Oh, just a drunk, Mr. O'Neill. We get him all the time. The girl, the girl. Oh, the girl. Oh, she's new. Started today. Just make sure that nothing happens or like happened to the Turner girl. But, Mr. O'Neill, I should be responsible for what happens to my employees in their spare time. It's no good pleading innocence with me about the Turner girl. She came to me the day before she jumped into the river. I told her to go back to her family in the country, but she thought she knew better. I'm going to keep an eye on this new girl. So help me if anything happens or I'll come back here and I'll break every bottle, glass, mirror, table and chair over your filthy head. Come on, Sam. Good evening, Hodges. Good evening, Miss. Oh, Do you know where my guardian is? Well, Dr. Trent is supposed to be operating about now, Miss. Would you like me to tell him you're here? Oh, don't bother. I don't want to interrupt him. I'll wait for him in the almoner's office. Very well, Miss. If I see him, I'll tell him you're here. Hodges, have you seen Dr. Trent? Oh. Good evening, Dr. Urquhart. I thought he was operating right now. Well, he's supposed to be, but we can't find him anywhere. Well, perhaps he went on an outside case. Must be a very important one to take him away when he should be in the theatre. What are you doing here? I came to meet him. And I want to see Mrs. Bolton. Maybe I'll see you later. Well, if you find him, will you tell him I'm waiting in the almoner's office? Of course. My dear, you shouldn't be about as late as this. <laughs> Nonsense, Mrs. Bolton. If I'm to take over your duties, I shall be a great deal later. If you take over my duties, I still don't think Dr. Trenter will allow it. I'm of age now. I can make up my own mind. Indeed you can, my dear, indeed you can. How about a nice cup of tea? <laughs> Thank you. May I go now, sir? Yes. You'll be all right walking in by yourself. Oh, of course. It's only a little why. All right, dear. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night, sir. It's you. What do you want? You'll be on the end of the bottle tonight. Well, it was no more than what you deserved. Now get out of my way. I'll call the governor. He's in the bar room.
instruments in front of a patient. Nothing to be frightened of, Kitty. Dr. Trent is a very good surgeon. You won't feel a thing. Sorry I'm late. Outside case. Already here? Yes, sir. Well, let me see that. Nose, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, well, now let's see what we can do for you, shall we? Thank you, nurse. Now, breathe deeply. Deep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Breathe deeply. That's it. Now, don't fight. Relax. <laughs> Relax. That's right. Now, breathe deeply. Now, count with me. One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, six. Scabble. Cut deeply, John. That's the secret of surgery these days. Cut deeply. When underneath her thumb goes Jim, isn't it a pity that the like shovel is... Hello? What have we got here, then? You catch ghosts living out here, old boy. Or, or is it old girl? <coughs> Yes, it is a girl. It's not old girl, neither. Here, ducks. What are you doing keeping in the open? Now, why don't you go home, eh? <laughs> you got a load on every ducks here. I'll give you an hand. <laughs> oh, my God. The Ripper. He's done it in. The Ripper has done another of them. But shut the window. How many times do I have to repeat? I must have the window shut, but I'm operating. Shut it this instant. It was me. Well, I found her. Was it? Yeah, it's just lying there. I thought she was sleeping. Come along now. Move back there. No, no, no. Bloody marvellous. Please always arrive half an hour after. The brave boys in blue. Yeah. Why can't we have protection? Here's Mr. O'Neill now. What are you going to do about that, O'Neill? Keep back. Is it always like that? Always. You know her. Name of Ellie Morris, sir. She's a barmaid at the Red Goose. Poor kids. They're all poor kids. What's the verdict, Inspector? Natural causes. Pity <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Jack didn't rip up a copper, eh, O'Neill? Did you call the wagon? Hey, yes. hey, you can't come through here. That's all right, Constable. 
Evening, Mr. Davis. Oh, Neil, have you no control over these crowds at all? Mutilation. Admirable diagnosis. And who might this be? Uh, Mr. Lowry, sir. He's an American. That would account for it. Have the body taken to the hospital. I'll do a post-mortem right away. I've already sent for the wagon. Heavens, man, let's get this thing out of the gutter. Carrier, it's only a few hundred yards, and be quick about it. That told them. It's about time somebody started giving a few orders around here. And, uh, come along, break it up, break it up. Get a bit of Who is the distinguished gentleman? Sir David Rogers. He's governor of the Mercy Hospital for Women. It's just around the corner from here. Not exactly sociable, is he? Oh, he's all right. His bark is worse than his bite. He's performed the majority of post-mortems on these girls. It's easy to understand why he's short-tempered. I'll get Sir David to look at her the next time he comes in, but she'll be all right. Oh, incidentally, Anne called for you earlier. She's downstairs in the almond's office. Oh. Oh, Louis, if you're taking those things away to clean, clean and hone this for me, will you? I'll pick it up tomorrow. A boil lancing. Rather nasty. With that? It was the only one I had with me. A little like cutting a fingernail with a pair of garden shears. These are the patient's records. We keep them for a year, then if they haven't oh, been... Ah, Mrs. Bolton, there's a body coming into the morgue. I'm going to do a post-mortem. Let them know, will you? Yes, Sir David. Well, good evening. Who are you? Anne Ford, sir. I'm Dr. Trent. Of course you're Trent as ward, aren't you? How silly of me. Well, what are you doing messing about with this stuff? Well, Mrs. Bolton's going on holiday shortly, sir. And I'm taking over her duties as almoner while she's away. That's right. I'd forgotten. Admirable. Admirable. Evening, Tranter. Just been talking to your ward. Delighted she's going to be the new almoner. Pretty face is just what this place needs. I was going to tell you as soon as everything was arranged. We'll talk about that later. Come along. Sir David's here, sir. He wants you in the morgue. What on earth for? They're bringing in a body. What sort of body? A dead one. I know that. But why should Sir David want to see it tonight? It's a ripper job, sir. Oh. I see. Oh, sir David's doing a post-mortem. So I understand. Come along, my dear. Here they come now, sir. Well, open them up. I want to get away before they arrive. Well, do you think that very wise, sir? I mean, they get a little nasty when something like this happens. I'm perfectly capable of looking after myself, Urquhart. I wish you good night. Good night, sir. Good evening, Dr. Tranter. Oh, good evening, Inspector. Who is it this time? Another little drab from the streets? Even if it was, what difference would it make? Ah, oh, the police force recruiting colonials now, Inspector? Uh, this is Mr. Lowry, sir. Sam, Dr. Tranter. Mr. Lowry is an American. I fail to see the distinction. Well, we had a war way back, remember? A revolution, Mr. Lowry. Not a war. <laughs> Excuse me, please. You're not going to try and get through that crowd, sir, are you? Well, of course I am. Well, I wouldn't, especially with a young lady. Come along, then. Get out of the way. You heard what I said? Get out of the way. I'll teach you to respect your... Hey! <laughs> Let's get him out of here. Grab the girl, Sam. Thank you, Mr. A Lowry. Sam Lowry. My name's Anne, Anne Thorne. Pleased to meet you. I'm most grateful to you, sir. Come along, my dear. We'll go out by the back. Thank you again. Sir David is doing a post-mortem. We'd like to be present. Is that all right? Of course, Inspector. Would you come this way, please? And then. Don't worry. They'll quieten down. 
I'm sorry, Anne, but you saw what happened here tonight. That sort of job's not for you. Don't you understand? This is the sort of work I want to do. It's no place for a woman. Well, Mrs. Bolton's a woman. Mrs. Bolton's different. She's only different because she's not your ward. I'm of age now. I, I feel I have certain responsibilities. The emancipation of womanhood that I've heard so much about. So you've been bitten by this disease, too. Call it what you like. But this is the work I want to do. I'd sooner have done it with your blessing. I've always tried to act in the best way possible for you. But as you've said, you're of age and a determined young woman. Well, go ahead, Anne. Take the job. Do the work if it pleases you. But not with my blessing. Well, so much for that. Get rid of those, Duggan. Yes, sir. You interested in the findings of the postmodern gentlemen? No, not unless they're different. They're not. Bruises on the neck, deep-seated multiple abdominal incisions, and as before, inflicted by someone who knew what he was doing. Excuse me, Sir David, how do you mean, knew what he was doing? As the inspector told you, young man, these wounds are not the savage slashings of a maniac. They're careful, well-defined abdominal incisions that show a good knowledge of anatomy and surgery. You mean a doctor? Doctor, nurse, student, any one of a number of professions. I'll look after her now. Under the circumstances, there is no verdict I can give other than murder by a person or persons unknown. However, before I adjourn this court, I would like to say this, and it is not my opinion alone. Public confidence in the police has never been as low as it is today in their complete inability to apprehend the the perpetrator of these ghastly crimes, they are showing themselves to be incompetent, inadequate, and inept. Court is adjourned. Incompetent, inadequate, and inept. All the papers are going to love this. Shushan, Mr. Shushan. No, Sonny, go what away. What do you think about the coroner's report? What about his statement? Just gentlemen, you heard what the coroner said. And Joe, there must be something you can say about this. Come on, what about the room? Come on, don't interrupt. What are you going to do about this? There must be a statement. You can go on. I'm sorry, I can't say it. Cab. Mr. Lowry. Miss Ford. How nice. Yeah, sure, your carriage. Certainly, when I get one. Maybe we'll stand a better chance at the street a little. All right, then. You've uh, been to the inquest? Of course. Why do you ask? I thought, uh, oh, it doesn't matter. You thought, what is a girl like me doing being interested in such things? You're as bad as my uncle. It's a social problem as well as a criminal one, you know. Oh, how come? It's a matter of class difference. If it had happened to some old duchess in Mayfair, there'd be such an outcry, something would have to be done about it, and done quickly. Because these are poor people and not particularly respectable, the general reaction from the... The right side of the tracks? That's it. General reaction is they're probably not getting much more than they deserve. Oh, yes, ma'am. You're making fun of me. Believe me, I'm not.
And how are your investigations going, Mr. Lowry? Has the well-trained American mind brought new light to bear on the subject? Now you're making fun of me. Seriously, though, the most difficult thing I've found is getting to know the people in the place. London isn't just one city, it's a hundred. And each section is completely different. What I need is a competent guide to show me around. One who knows both sides of the tracks and is accepted there. You think this may help? Oh, indeed I do. Uh, you wouldn't know anyone, would you? Well, I suppose I could. I'll take you around, Mr. Lowry. How would that be? That'd be just fine. When can we start? When would you like to start? This evening. Call for me at my house at 8. 27 Bruton Square. That'll be just fine. Are you just wanting to sit, or are you going somewhere? No, I'm not going anywhere. How about you? Oh, will you ask him to take me to the hospital? Certainly. Oh, and uh, thanks for the ride, Miss Ford. Until this evening. Mercy Hospital for Women, Whitechapel, please. Mr. Lowry, I would have been extremely disappointed if you hadn't managed to fabricate a reason for wanting to see me again. Tell him I'll be right down, will you? Tell who? Oh, Uncle. Thought it was Perkins announcing my escort. Who's the lucky man this evening? That American policeman, Mr. Lowry. Remember we met him that awful night at the hospital? You're going out with him? Yes. I wish you wouldn't. Well, why on earth not? Well, he seems so... so brash. <laughs> Uncle, just because he has an accent and didn't go to Eton. I still wish you wouldn't go out with him. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself, you know. Yes, I know that, but it's... it's just that I, I don't like the idea of you going about with a policeman. But, what is it? There's a Mr. Lowry downstairs, miss. Oh, tell him I'll be down in a moment. Where's he taking you? To where? Uh, to a concert. Chamber music. Very dull. Good night, darling. Good night. Good evening, sir. Good evening, madam. Oh, let me get you a little table. I've got some private room. Yeah. Oh, no, no, this will be just fine. Of course. Wait up. Yes, sir. Champagne. On the house. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt as to which side of the tracks you're showing me this evening. our next conducting tour. You're looking for someone? Yeah, the new girl. What new girl? The one in the end. O'Neill warned the manager he intends to take a paternal interest in her future welfare. Glad somebody does. How do you look? Seems we're not the only ones to have crossed the tracks this evening. Evening, my lord. Everything ready? Of course, my lord. The usual room, the champagne's iced. Uh, Capital. <laughs> this way, my lord. Wait a minute. Who 
Who's that? That one at the end. She's only been here a week, my lord. So much the better. Send her up with Margaret as soon as you can. There's a good fellow. Got a friend with him. Show her what to do. Oh, not her. Why not? Well, she's only been here a week. Well, it's time she started earning a living. You don't mind having a drink with a couple of special customers, do you, my dear? I don't think so. No, of course not. <laughs> Ten minutes. Come on, love. Yeah, come on, go on. Yes, I have. Well, I'm going to keep it. You don't know what it cost me. I have a very good idea, darling. What have you got over there? Methylated spirits. Oh, you are a mean lot of cows this evening. Why don't you buy some of your own? Watch out, Maggie. She's after your booze. Am I all right? Don't worry yourself, dear. You look lovely. Do you mind, dearie? There we are. My, my, don't we look lovely? Now, if they make a joke, laugh, even if you don't understand it. Keep smiling like you're having a wonderful time. I can't imagine why a lord should want to meet me. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, dearie. Just watch Maggie. She'll show you what to do. Play your cards right and you might end up a duchess. <laughs> why don't you button your mouth? Oh, listen to the lady. Don't take any notice of her. Since when have you become so high and mighty? Since his lordship gave up sluts like you. Why, like you cow! <laughs> Very nice indeed. Now, take these with you. Room four. Have you been at the bottle again? Oh, go to hell. Come on, you lot. You're all on in five minutes. Go away. We know. Freddy, we bought some extra ammunition. Maggie, you're looking junky. <laughs> mm. I'm Margaret, and this is Hazel. She's new. Ah, fascinating. Uh, come over here, my dear. Come on, love. He's not going to bite you. I wouldn't bank on that, my dear. Go on, dear. Do like the gentleman says. Uh, sit down. A glass of champagne? No, thank you, sir. I don't drink. She is new. Of course she drinks. If the young lady doesn't want to drink, she doesn't have to. I like a gal that uh, knows her own mind. Thank you, sir. You don't have to call me sir, my dear. Tom's the name. But I don't know you. Oh, she's a card, this one. Always joking. Call him Tom like he says. All right. Tom. Are you quite sure you won't have one, my dear? All right, then. Perhaps just this once. Oh, uh, are you sure, my dear? I don't want you to do anything that you don't want to do. Well, I I'd like to. We'll take ours in the other room. Have fun, children. <laughs> Where have they gone? They thought we'd like to be alone. What for? I thought we were having a party. Uh, we are a private, intimate party. <laughs> Just you and I. Oh, well, I don't think... Uh... Now, come on, finish up your bubbly. <laughs> Won't All do right. you any harm. You like it, don't you? Uh, drink it up, lass. 
Right to the bottom. Come on, man. That's it. <laughs> there, it wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> hey, you, you like me, don't you? He's very kind. It seems how you like me. <laughs> what about giving me a little kiss? I eh? have no Just one little <laughs> Oh, Freddy! Oh, God, not here, Freddy. Come on. Oh. I think I better be done. What's the hurry? Come here. I, I must go. Oh, what about the kiss you're going to give me? Leave me alone. <laughs> Let me go. I'd like to go with a bit of spirit. Look what you've done. You've ruined my dress. Take it off, then. You little... What are you doing here? That man. He tore my dress. Oh, that was a stupid girl. What do you think I went up there for? Hey, come back, you little fool. Well, don't just stand there. Go after her. We don't want no trouble with the police. Hurry. Is he after you? Hide here. Please! Come back! Enough education for one evening? Fine. The Ripper! He's done it again! The Ripper's done it again! Larry! I trust you have an explanation for bringing my war to an establishment like this. I bought him. I find that hard to believe. However, luckily, I happen to see you. Come along, my dear. I'll take you home. You better go. Well, if you say so. I assume you're off to join the morbid and the sensation seekers at the scene of the crime. I've had a most pleasant evening. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Sir? I don't approve of Mr. Lowry any more than I approve of places like this. Well, why are you here? Since you must know, I didn't believe your story of a concert, and I followed you. Now, shall we go home? Doctor? Undertaker, more like it. A wagon's been sent for, sir. Inspector O'Neill? Yeah, he's been sent for too, sir. Why ain't O'Neill here? Then it might never have happened. He's never here when he's wanted. Hey, safe no more. Come on, why don't you yeah, go Yeah, get rid of them all. Thank you. 
Rabbit. Now, let's see how you like it. Oh! Oh, you It'll be our head next time. Now get out of here before I forget I'm a policeman. Move! Go on, home, all of you! Come on, Ben. I went to see the Home Secretary personally. He was delighted. Delighted! There'll be promotion in this for you, O'Neill. I'm not making any promises, though, but there's every chance. What do you think of that, eh? Uh, very gratifying, sir. I thought you'd feel that way. Now, I think we'll keep the fiend here tonight. Have to organize well, of course. The crowd will probably try to rob us of our prey. And then tomorrow morning, we'll move him and... Can't uh, move him, sir. Can't. Why not? He hasn't been charged with anything. You're joking, of course. I put Benson into protective custody, sir. Nothing more. Well, go down to his cell and charge him right away. With what? Murder. Multiple murder. He is Jack the Ripper. Is he? What do you mean, is he? Of course he is. You locked him up, didn't you? Protective custody, I said, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. It's these reports. I can hardly stop him breaking the door down. What about yeah, the Get, down. Down. Get, Get down. rid of him, Sergeant. Well, I want a statement, sir. Do as I say. This instant. Well, no, come on, get him. What do you know about it? What's going to happen to him? Has he been charged? What does Inspector O'Neill think his chances are? Let O'Neill make a statement. Gentlemen, please, you've all had the official statement. I'm afraid I can't add to it. Louis Benson, employee at the Mercy Hospital for Women, has been taken into custody. Now, what sort of a statement is that? That's right. The yeah. official oh, sort, that's all you're going to get. Where's O'Neill? Aren't you Sir David Roberts? Benson went to your hospital. What do you think about this affair? Do you think Benson's the ripper? Oh. Is O'Neill in here? Yes, sir, but you can't go in there. Ah. O'Neill, what's this idea about Louis Benson being locked up? That's right, sir. What do you mean, that's right? Release him immediately. What may I ask? Who are you? This is Assistant Commissioner Hodges of Scotland Yard, Sir David. Ah, good. Then perhaps you can talk some sense to this mutton-headed policeman. Tell him to release Benz at once. I should do no such thing. Who do you think you are, barging in here like this, giving me instructions? Never mind who I am. Do as I tell you. You realize, of course, that this Benz is Jack the Ripper. Balder Dash. Whose idea is that? Yours, O'Neill? Uh, no, sir. Yours, then, I suppose. Really, Mr. Assistant Commissioner, I think the Metropolitan Police Force is staffed by a bunch of half-wits. And not so half-witted as those at the top. What put that damn full idea into your head, anyway? Benz was carrying a bag full of surgical instruments. Oh, was he now? Well, of course, that makes a difference. What do you suppose these are? Toothpicks? Go on, arrest me. While you're at it, try locking up the rest of my staff. Tad to Urquhart, all of us. There's not one Jack the Ripper, there's half a dozen of us. We take it in turns. Louis Benz is in protective custody. He hasn't yet been charged. I... We thought it was the only safe place for him. Then why didn't you say so in the first place? I'm still not saying he isn't the Ripper. Then you're still being asinine. And I'm going to see the Home Secretary and tell him so. Good night, sir. Shall I go downstairs now, sir, and charge Benz? Um, no. No, O'Neill. We'll leave it for a while. Well, if you'll pardon me, sir, I have work to do. What's that? I'm going to try and find Jack the Ripper. Come on, sir. My life, Mr. O'Neill. How was I to know the poor little thing would go and get herself carved up by the Ripper? You can't blame me for that, can you? What was it that sent her running out into the night on her own? I can't blame you for that either, I suppose. Well, I... Well? I've got to make a living, Mr. O'Neill. The legitimate side of the business don't pay nothing. People come in here, they buy half a beer and they sit all the evening. I got to make a living. The suit. Now mind the suit, Mr. O'Neill. Listen, you. It so happens that I've got something else that's taking up all of my time. But as soon as I clear it up, you better start looking for a new way of making a living. Because I'm going to close this place up so tight it won't see daylight for 20 years. Flaming busybody. I hope the Ripper carves him up. I'm coming along here, sir. And just there was where I saw the courting couple. And then I went on, sir. couple on this door. Yes, that's it, don't you? And then I went on and... That's I... where you discover the body. Oh, no, sir. No, it... Here, wait a minute. You're right, Mr. Lim. You're dead right. So they wasn't courting after all. The Ripper, Harry. You saw the Ripper. Oh, good. Harry, what did this man look like? Well, I don't know, sir. I didn't really look at him, actually. Here, wait a minute. If he was a Ripper, I heard him talk. Cock, what was he saying? Well, I just passed by, still looking for the young lady. And we heard him say, is your name, is your name Sunday or other? Well, what, Harry, is your name what? Mary. Mary it was. Mary something. 
Think, man, think. Why, I'm thinking, sir. Mary, Mary, Mary Clark. That was it. Is your name Mary Clark? Mary Clark. Ring any bells, then? Not right off. All right, Harry, you can go now. Not a word of this to anyone, do you understand? Uh, yes, sir. If you say so, sir. I say so. That's so you don't forget, huh? Well, thanks, Mr. Leary. Good night. Good, Good night, sir. Good night. Mary Clark. I wonder who she is. And whoever she is, the Ripper's looking for her, but he hasn't found her yet. That doesn't explain why these other young girls have been butchered. Why? They could identify him, couldn't they? Yeah. Let's hope for her sake we find her first. Kitty, you're not well enough yet. And you speak to her. Won't do any good. Just a few more days. Until you're really strong. No, thank you, Miss All the same. I want to go home. All right, Kitty. But I want you to promise me something. What? That you'll let me come and visit you. Morning. Morning, sir. How could you have to get someone else to assist in the theater? Those idiots have still got bench locked up. Yes, sir. Hello, dear. You want to mind? Uh, Dr. Tranter's case, sir. He's asking to be discharged. I told her I do not consider her fit enough. Hmm. What does Dr. Tranter say? He says we can't hold her against her will. I'm afraid he's right. If she insists on leaving, we can't stop her. But I must say, I think you're being very foolish, young lady. The doctor here knows what's best for you. I still want to go home, sir. All right, Urquhart. Sign the discharge. Yes, sir. Don't forget about the theater assistant, will you? No, no, sir. I think this is him. Your name's Clark, isn't it? Yes. I'm Inspector O'Neill. Good luck. Lord help me, God, I wasn't there. This fella said to me that I want to make myself a couple of quid, and I said, no, not if it ain't honest. And anyway, I wasn't there. Records show that you have a daughter, Mary, Mary Clark. Even if I had been there, I wouldn't... What, Mary? What's my poor little baby daughter got to do with all this? You do have a daughter, Mary. Yeah, and a sweeter kind of girl never lives. She depends on me, you know. I'm her only means of support. If you locks me up, she'll starve to death. We're not gonna lock you up, Clark. We just want to find out about your daughter. Honest? That's all. It's not about the Houston Road job, then, the one where I wasn't there. Oh, no, we just want to find your daughter. Oh, I can't help you, I'm afraid. What's that supposed to mean? I ain't seen the little slut for ten years. You just said that... Ah, that's flannel, Gov, just flannel. You've no idea where she is. No, I forgot I had a daughter till that other fella come looking for what her. What other fella? I don't know who he was. About four months ago. Posh fella, he was tough. What do you look like? I didn't see him properly because it was dark, but he was a posh fella. He... Uh, he was carrying a little black bag. So much for that fool idea of Louis Bentz being the ripper. I've already released him. About time, too. Take that, Urquhart. Yeah. The whole idea was a lot of nonsense, anyway. Pawn ticket. No name? Yeah. Here we are. Grace Merchant. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Miss. May I come in? You want to? <laughs> of course I want to. You said I could come and visit you. What did you come round for? To see how you are. Oh, I'm all right, thank you. Well, then, do you need anything? No, thank you. <laughs> Lovely flowers. Is this your young man? Leave to learn. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to upset you. 
Shouldn't have behaved like that. It was very rude of me. I'm sorry. It's all right. He was my young man. We were going to be married. He found out about, well, my life before I met him. The men I'd been with. I don't think you'd understand, Miss, what it's like for a girl like me. I'm not much good. Never was. Then I met him. He was very kind. He said he loved me. I wanted to tell him all about myself and what I was. But somehow each time I was going to, I put it off. And then, as I said, he found out, and the next day they found his body in the river. Dreadful. Well, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all over now. I'm sorry. Can I get you something? A cup of tea? Well, you stay there. I'll get it. Last time you had something to eat? Yesterday evening. But I'll be all right. I'm going out later to see a woman I know about a job. Yes, but you won't get paid for at least a week. In the meantime, you've got to eat. Look, I'll put you down on the parish register. That way you can get food from the hospital. I don't want any charity. Now, don't be so silly. You've been ill. If you don't eat, you'll find yourself back in hospital. It's cheaper for us to keep you out. Oh, have you got a birth certificate? Yes. What do you want it for? Well, I have to have it for the parish register. Oh. Fine. I'll call around later this evening. Bring you a hamper. Well, I don't want to go to any trouble, miss. Oh, it's no trouble. Good. Thank you, miss. You're very kind. See you later this evening.
thought it was you. I've been following you. You shouldn't have tried to hide. Now ah, then, what's going on here? How did you two get in? The gate was open. Oh, was it now? We'll have to see about that. And I'll ask you both to leave. Well, of course. Yeah. We'll leave at once. Anne. What's the matter? I, I saw you come from Kitty Knowles' place and I tried to catch up with you, but you were going so fast. I, I was frightened. Frightened? What on earth? Oh, no, wait a minute. You didn't think that I... that I was... Oh, Anne! <laughs> oh, come on. I'll walk back to the hospital with you. <laughs> Give me the clips. You put that one there. Not there, idiot. There. But hold it. It's no good, Benz. Leave her alone. Let her die in peace. Just looking in to see if everything's all right. What's the matter, Louis? What's that? Let me have a look. No good, sir. She's going to die. Nonsense. No one dies while their heart's still beating. We must hurry. Get that clip out. It's strangling the blood vessel. Louis, I want swabs, clips, sterilizing pan. Quickly. I feel a bit tired. I'm going home. Are you ready? Oh, I have some work to do first. Anyway, Mr. Lowry's calling for me later. Kitty Knowles. Isn't that the girl I operated on? Yes. Mary Clark. She's on her birth certificate. Well, if you're not coming home, I'll get along. Well, she'll be all right. Hey, Trento? Yes, sir, I think she will. Oh, of course she will. Sir David. What is it? I'd, I'd like you to accept my resignation. Uncle. Resignation? What are you talking about? Well, you saw what happened here. If you hadn't arrived when you did, that girl would have died. Even Louis Benz knew when I was making a mistake. Good heavens, man, that's no reason to resign. I think it is. I feel I've come to the end of my work here. N nonsense. You've been overworking, that's all. You need a rest. Look, why not take a couple of weeks off? Then if you still want to resign, we can talk about it again. Very well, sir. I'll walk to the gates with you. And Tranta, you'll never come to the end of your work here. Remember that. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Excuse me. But, Uncle, because of one small error... I've told you why. I feel I've accomplished everything that I set out to do in this part of London. There's no more for me. Sir David's suggestion was right. Take two weeks' rest. Good night, my dear. And don't be too late home. I'll be all right.
Sands still here? She had to go out, sir. Took a hamper of food to that kitty know. She said, would you wait, sir? Thanks. son. But he's dead, isn't he? You killed him. I killed him? As surely as if you'd plunge a knife into his heart. He was going to be a surgeon, you know. A brilliant surgeon. A genius. But you turned his mind. You drove my boy to suicide. No, I loved him. How dare you speak of love? You defile the word. Like some foul, malignant virus, you and your kind contaminate the gutter you inhabit. The very air you breathe, no one is safe. I've been sweeping the streets looking for you, Mary Clark. Scouring the pavements, so young men may be safe. Young men like, like... Paul. Paul. Paul! You're ill. I must kill the virus. I must kill it before it's too late. Destroy it. No, Mary. <laughs> Come 
I'm the only adult one up there. I'm sorry, Sir David. Well, what's happened? You're all covered in blood. Are you all right? Yes, I think so. Evening, Sir David. Uh, what do you want? Working late, aren't you? Obviously. What are you doing here? Oh, I have reason to believe the uh, Ripper is somewhere in this hospital. Nonsense. The reporter has just been attacked. Why should that lead you to believe the Ripper's in the building? I was under the impression he confined his attacks to women. Well, there has been another killing. Only this time he was forced to leave in a hurry. He left this behind. Well. Just like my bank. Hey, Mr. Lowry. Now, if you don't mind, I've work to do. Good evening, Sir David. Look here, Inspector. This is a mortuary, not a public art gallery. I'm sorry, sir, but I came to see you about the porter. Mr. Lowry's already informed me. The porter was murdered by some ruffian. I didn't say he'd been murdered, Sir David. I said he'd been attacked. Well, you... You implied it, then. He's been taken to the operating theater. Dr. Ecker thinks he can be saved. He'd like you to operate. Well, that's... that's quite impossible. But can't you see I'm busy? I've got to finish this post-mortem. I think you'd better come to the theater, sir. Are you telling me what to do, Inspector? Yes, sir, I am. This is impertinence. Gross impertinence. Possibly, but we want to save this man's life. You're a doctor. Surely that's your wish, too? Very well. I'll uh, see what I can do. Thank you, sir. Circus. If I see this man, I must see him alone. Is that clear? Perfectly clear, Sir David. How is he, Dr. Rickett? He's regaining consciousness slowly. David here to look after you now. Thank you. Ground floor. 
why we didn't take him to the morgue in the first place, beats me. Poor old thing. Even I guess he was dead. infamous murderer since Bluebeard and the files will always be marked unsolved. Well, good night. Night, sir. 